Hi there. And it doesn't work for our postal service. With Royal Mail Group taking £758 million in profit last year, yet our universal service obligation is at risk. Part three. Workers' pay conditions and 10,000 jobs are at threat. Will the Prime Minister continue to let obscene amounts of profit be made while services are cut and stamp prices rise, or will she launch an inquiry into the gross mismanagement of Royal Mail? Live extreme. What we need is questions. an efficient yeah. postal service UK that's delivered to four people across this country, and that's what I'm focused on, not making ideological points. Oh, time the moment. This is all now, look, it's 12.23pm in the afternoon. It is the uh, 19th October, 22. When I was in business, it was a real privilege to employ very many talented, bright young people. I always found that when you believed in somebody, when you gave them the opportunity, they went on to thrive in their career. That's why tomorrow in North Norfolk, I'll be launching my new scheme, the 100 Apprenticeship Challenge, to drive 100 new apprenticeships all over a rural constituency. Would the Prime Minister please thank not just my DWP office and Julia Nix, who's been fantastic, the district councils, the county councils, and an awful lot of stakeholders have worked for over six months to deliver this fantastic scheme to drive growth and jobs for young people across my constituency. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I do want to thank Julia and her team for the fantastic job they're doing, and also you as the local member of, sorry, my right honourable friend as the local member of parliament. Apprenticeships are a fantastic way for people to learn and gain experience, and I'm proud that we've created 5.1 million apprenticeships since 2010. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Speaker. The Prime Minister's Chief of Staff is in hot water after lobbying on behalf of a Libyan warlord and big tobacco. It turns out he's also lobbied for PPE giants Sante Global. Is it wise to have a lobbyist at the centre of Downing Street? Yeah. 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 Prime Minister. Oh. in Downing Street He's got you there. Really checked through the propriety and ethics process and that is the way that we do it in a completely impartial way. Andrew Mitchell. Thank you Mr Speaker. When my right honourable friend was Foreign Secretary I know that she was acutely aware of the importance of British soft power acting in our national interest. Will she confirm today the promise we both made in 2010 when this government first came into office, that she will not balance the books on the backs of the poorest people in the world. Well, can I pay tribute to my right honourable friend for the fantastic work he did as International Development Secretary. And I am proud that we have rebalanced our international development budget to focus more on humanitarian aid and more on women and girls. And no doubt, more details will be set out in due course. Sarah Owen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The last Tory Prime Minister was forced out after a series of dodgy dealings and failing to take responsibility for any of it. So what's this Prime Minister getting the boot for? Her plan that crashed the economy, forcing fracking on communities who don't want it, or will she do the decent thing and go and call a general election? Oi! Hear, hear! I have taken responsibility. No, you haven't! the right decision in the interest of Your puppet. economic stability. Resign! Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Every single member in this House will have constituents waiting for treatment within the COVID backlog. The Health Secretary's priorities are absolutely right, including her B for tackling the backlogs. Can the Prime Minister reassure me that the government is committed to the series of elective hubs that we've promised, including at the Royal Hampshire County Hospital in my Winchester constituency? Yeah. Prime Minister. Well, the, my right honourable friend, the Health Secretary, has set out her plans to deliver on dealing with the COVID backlog and she will continue to work on that and make sure we deal with what was a massive, you know, a massive pandemic, a massive pandemic, creating a backlog, we will deal with it. Since the mini budget, thousands of my constituents have been in mental anguish and despair. 
I recognize that the Honorable Lady has faced a week of mental anguish and despair herself. She has been, had people angry with her, she's had people who have mocked her. Mm -hmm. But having had that experience, what will she now do to improve the health care, the mental health care for people in this country so that the, 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 the anguish that they face in the coming months is properly responded to and dealt with? Hey. My, my right honourable friend, the health secretary, has set out a very clear plan of how we're going to deal with the backlog created by COVID, how we're going to make sure people get timely GP appointments, and how we're going to improve on the services in our hospitals, including mental health services. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The government is facing tough choices, but people living with dementia face unlimited care costs, and that is not a choice. Brutal. Can my right honourable friend assure me that she is committed to social care reform to end that worry and relieve pressure on the NHS? Yeah, yeah. Yes, we are committed to social care reform. We do need to deal with those issues. I don't know how far apart, do I? Oh dear. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's always better to see a Prime Minister at her desk rather than underneath it. And now that she's here... Now that she's here, I wonder if she could tell us why next week this House will be discussing legislation that will abolish vital protections on pension payouts. Someone's wearing a mask there, look. Our right to watch the Olympics. Can't blame her, really. Royal of ice is everywhere. Airline consumer laws. How is any of the retained law bill in the British interest? Prime Minister. Well, Mr. Speaker, I think we have yet another example of somebody who doesn't want to support the British public's decision to leave the European yeah. Union in 2016. Isn't it? Sorry, isn't it quite incredible, Mr. Speaker, that six years after people voted to leave the European Union, there are people who object to taking EU law off our statute books? Now, I'm a Democrat. I respect what British people voted for. I suggest, I suggest the right honourable lady does the same. Richard Graham! Mr. Speaker, 30 years ago, the Westminster Foundation for Democracy was created out of the war in Bosnia yeah. so that democracies could flourish and freedom and prosperity come with it. This evening, in your rooms, we celebrate that anniversary by hearing directly from our country representative in Ukraine, from the chair of the Taiwanese Foreign Affairs Committee and the leader of the opposition in Uganda, a good example of the range of contacts that this great cross-party body funded by government is working with. Can I ask the Prime Minister if she agrees that this is a vital contribution by our government and our people to democracy around the world, and will she encourage members around the House to join us this evening? Yes. Yes. Prime Minister. Well, the Westminster Foundation for Democracy does a fantastic job, and I think we know from what has happened in Ukraine, the appalling war perpetrated by Vladimir Putin, just how precious democracy is. And how much we need the to problem do is that's going on for years, darling. It's going to stop anytime soon. Around the world, and I do encourage. Me for keep doing funding that I don't know. To the event that now completes Prime Minister's questions. I'll let the house clear. There you go, guys. It's Prime Minister's questions over. So like this video, please a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel, Sign Gems. The force is always quite my spot. The needs are many, outweighing uh, needs of few. This is my friend Sparky on Timber on the ITF Friday Friday every Friday 3 to 5 p.m. in the afternoon. In digital days 1500 to 1700 p.m. on the Surrey Hills Radio Station every Friday. And this is me on Lara's Radio Station show with John Andrews every Sunday on the Waking Radio Station show at 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. How did you watch this video? That's the, that's the Prime Minister's questions. And how's this Collins? Over and out. Bye, everyone. Subscribe to my show on Stein Gems. This is exciting, isn't it? Very important video. Bye, everyone.